Ferris. Yeah, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, our viewers from wherever you are watching. We are glad to be here again this evening to discuss issues around the global space, Nigeria and in Nigeria in particular. And this evening we have uh, with us the village boy. Yeah, I believe you are familiar with the village boy. We have uh, Mr. Paul joining us. And of course, we have uh, Mr. Yomi joining us to actually do justice to the discussion this evening. I'm Olaogun Michael by name. And uh, here we are to discuss about Nigeria and the current issues. Before we go further, I encourage you, if you are viewing us, please kindly take uh, to, uh, share this discussion for the benefit of others out there. Yeah. In the last uh, couple of days, we have seen a lot of things happening in the country, which uh, in Nigeria we call buzzbos. Let me use that language. And uh, the buzzbos is getting eaten by day, and it has to do with issue around uh, Shiv Sunday Adeyemo Iboho, his uh, detention in Benin Republic, and the interest of the federal government in, in having him uh, extradicted to Nigeria, and that of... Uh, Abba Kiari, in, I mean, alleged to have been in, alleged to have been involved in the uh, crime saga of Oshpopi, and of course the detention of Mazinam de Kanu, uh, the leader of IPOP, as it were, and the uh, issuance of order by the, uh, I mean, the proposed issuance of order by the IPOP team beginning from August 8th in, I mean, uh, that's in, in the next couple of days. And finally, the release of uh, the Islamic cleric El Zagzaki that was released a few days ago. So these are the issues we want to be discussing and how it affects us as a nation. So thank you for joining us once again. And I do encourage that you share this uh, conversation. Now, let me start with the village boy. Yeah. It has been happening, but what do you make of the arrest of uh, Sunday Hadi Emoiboho, Chief Sunday Hadi Emoiboho, uh, aka uh, Sunday Boho, as I mean, in Benin Republic, and of course, putting into consideration the attack on his residence, leaving about three or eight people dead. And when I say three, I mean that they killed three. Why uh, it was reported that about take us through this before we delve into all. Well, thank you so very much for having me again. Um, again, when we look at some fundamentals of this, um, the issues that um, are germane and the issues that are not popular. But like I said, I think previously, both um, Kano and Sunday Buhu, they are circumstantial leaders. They, they, they emerge to, to fill a gap uh, of the failure of the states, you know, uh, 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 the failure of governance, the failure of um, of inclusion, the failure of managing our diversity to to better uh, the lot of the people. So those are the circumstances that threw away these people. That is on the one side. That is one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is that usually. Uh, when you find when you fight government, there are usually consequences. Uh, it doesn't matter how plausible uh, your 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 reason for for taking up arms, either physical arms or rhetorically uh, rhetorical arms against government. There are usually consequences. Um, I also recollect the last time I talked about um, where the invasion of his home at the dead of the night was was called for. Uh, I also said that day that it was not unusual for clandestine operation, especially for secret police. So um, there, is, there, is, there is a tiny uh, line between uh, morality and legality. So most of the things that we see on social media about these issues appears to moral. The other aspect, uh, when well, it's called in terms of legality, for instance, there there are a lot of uh, information clouding the arrest of uh, Ibohosha. If I want to call him uh, in the real Yoruba uh, <laughs> way, we call him in Benin Republic. Um, there, 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 there were contradictory uh, uh, information 
Was he traveling with Nigerian passport? If yes, where how did he get the Nigerian passport? Because the DSS purportedly, purportedly, purportedly has seized his international passport, Nigerian international passport. So where did he get the passport he was traveling with? There was another thing that I said that okay, he got um Ben uh, Republic passport, and there have been deniers and counter deniers about that. So unless he had um two different passports to travel with. So if his original passport has been confiscated by the Department of State Security, DSS, during the raid of his house, then um, we can question, uh, except that we are not aware that is a, he has a dual citizenship of any country, of any other country than Nigeria. So those are the issues there. Well, he, 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 he had to escape for is their life uh, try to travel out if he's with a Nigerian passport, which might be Oluwole, or it might also be genuine. Oluwole is uh, what we use for fake uh, certificate, fake docu government documents. So if it, if, if it is that, then it's, it's like illegality on its own. Uh, but then, in terms of morality, uh, Self-preservation is a false law in nature. So if he's running for his dead life, uh, you can say he's fairly entitled to that. Uh, so a lot of things uh, then, because the matter is, uh, is in the court now in the Benin Republic, there are a lot of things that we could not see that we, uh, otherwise it would be termed prejudice to the court proceedings. So there are, there are, there are facts that are still not uh, very clear about um, the circumstances surrounding his arrest. But the fact that he was flying away from, through the Banana Republic outside Nigeria, then um, you can say it is within the, still the, the legal power of the Nigeria government to have him so arrested. That is the, that is the legal aspect. Morally speaking, it is neither here nor there. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. I, I will love the diplomatic approach you have maintained in this conversation. Yeah. Now, let me, before I come to Mr. Paul, Mr. Ayomi, I am coming to you. And uh, looking at all of this, it is crystal clear that the federal government, uh, they have indicated much interest in having uh, Chief Sunday go a bush, uh, just like the village boy called him and his street as his street name. Do you think having him extradited into the country is would be the best, putting into consideration the alleged kidnap of Mazinam the Kanu back into the country from Kenya and his present circumstances surrounding uh um, I mean Sunday so I mean surrounding the situation both in and out of Nigeria? Well, um, thank you very much for having me on this platform, I must say. And um, I want to appreciate everyone who are on the platform, the village boy, as you call him, and a few other persons that I might not uh, be able to mention their name. Uh, okay. Now, to asking whether it is in the, or it is the best thing at this time is to get Sunday go back to Nigeria. I would first start by the word best, okay? It might be the best thing for some certain interests. I mean, the government who wants him back to Nigeria, but for Nigeria as a country at this moment, I would say that um, it might not be the best thing, you know, to exert all the energy the way we have seen the federal government doing at this time on getting Sunday go back to Nigeria. If I must say, Sunday go is not the problem of Nigeria, really. Just as um, Village Boy said, you see, Sunday go would not have emerged. Namdi Kanu would not have emerged if not for the failure and the lackadaisical like, attitude of the state actors, you know, to what is the paramount or the, the, the major responsibility that they have, which is securing lives and properties of Nigerians. So if they have failed, and these people, Sunday Go and Namdikanu, have emerged as a result of the lacuna that they created. So why should, for, for God's sake, the, all the efforts should now be on getting Sunday Go back to Nigeria? Of what economic importance 
is bringing Sunday Bo back to Nigeria? Of what security importance is bringing Sunday Bo back to Nigeria? There are the bandits, just as they call them, who we have seen shut down a war plane. So I think all efforts should be on those people who are really threatening the sovereignty of Nigeria. Right to self-determination, the one we see Sunday Bo doing, is covered by international laws. So why should Nigeria now have the whole focus on bringing Sunday Bo back to Nigeria? Then also looking at Sunday Bo, we may not, you know, like his face. We may not like who he is. We may not like his approach. But to some certain extent, what he's saying himself and his supporters are legit in a way, okay? You are killing people, and I am standing up to say enough is enough, okay? If somebody is saying enough is enough to abnormalities, how do we go ahead and tag such person as a criminal? Yes, we might not agree with his style, but just as Yoruba people would say, that you don't throw, you know, the water away, you know, with the baby. You are batting the baby. You don't throw the baby away with the water. You used to bait him. So if his style is wrong, we still cannot say that what he is clamoring for himself and his supporters, you know, is wrong. Then Sunday Bo is an opinion leader. He has a lot of people, you know, with him. It might be very dangerous, really, to want to forcefully bring him back to Nigeria. Just as we see, you know, Namdikanu people, they went to court on the day that Namdikan was supposed to be in court. And so we see that they have supporters, which may cause problems in their different localities if anything should happen to the arrowhead. I mean, Sunday ago, in this case now. So I want to say that it, it is not in the best interest of Nigerian security. It is not in the best interest of Nigerian economy. What I feel, you know, concerns the masses, you know, in bringing Sunday go back. But it may be in the best interest of whoever or the set of people in government that is interested in bringing him back. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for that uh, analytical uh, view. Uh, now to Mr. Paul. Uh, I know you'll be very much interested in this. Uh, what charge or charge or charges will federal government levy against him for speaking in defense of his people daily, facing onslaught from the Fulani X-Men? Because now it is clear, just like uh, it has been earlier stated, that they want him back to the country. But what do you think uh, are the charges they will bring against him, owing to the fact that it has never at any time been pointed out that he has killed anyone or what? So you have the floor. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, and um, welcome my my fellow uh, analysts tonight. So, um, when you look at the issue, you, the, the the major thing they might be charging him for could be being in possession of arms, just like they paraded they paraded his boys, and uh, you know, let's say his his aides. And the, it is believed that he, he engaged in a gun battle with the security forces when they went to his house that particular night. So that might be one particular reason why they might, I mean, one, one particular uh, charges they might want to levy against him. And as we know Nigeria now, uh, it is easy for them to say is uh, uh, also a threat to the nation. Okay, so the, the, we may begin to look at uh, uh, treason, treasonable felony. You know, I, I'm just thinking based on what we've seen so far, but we, honestly, it is difficult to actually peep into the mind of these people, you know, but based on the, the what we have seen in their attitude recently, that's why I am just making these assumptions, looking at people like uh, uh, Shewere, who has been uh, detained and locked down in Abuja for, for two, more than two years now, over what he was saying, you know, over common protests, revolution armed protests, and then, you know, saying that he wanted to topple the government. You know, perhaps uh, during the NSAS uh, protests, if there were leaders, maybe those leaders also would, would have been in court now defending themselves. Because even President Buhari thinks uh, the, the, the NSAS guys, they want to remove him from office. He said it with, by, by, by himself. So, you would expect that they, they might also be thinking they might they might also be thinking of charging him, you know, for for, for that as well. So, uh, but in, in reality, I think we would be looking at how they want to look at it. We'll be looking, we'll be watching, you know, 
we are watching them, our eyes are on them to see what they are going to do. I think um, what, what we've seen so far is, uh, I guess, Benin Republic not allowing the federal government of Nigeria to be able to um, twist uh, the, 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 the small country, okay? Because ordinarily, the rumor is that there, there was a plane waiting at the airport that day, that night, you know, ready to transport him back to Nigeria, just like they did with uh, NMD, or just like they probably did with NMD Kano, because we don't know the truth. Yeah, and that's the, that's, that's the danger here, because I see it as a danger when you have a government that you can't even, you can't even uh, defend them, you know, and be sure that you are saying what is right. You know, there, there are so much lies so much room for the citizens to, to, to second guess them, what they, what they say, and even their, their, their behavior. So, and all of this is what is leading to a lot of issues uh, as we see in Nigeria. So, but then uh, we, we, we will wait, you know, we'll be waiting to see what they will charge uh, Namde, I mean, Sunday go with, especially if they're able to uh, bring him back to Nigeria as they are probably uh, trying to do, to, to do. I was listening to an interview of uh, Mr. Femi Falano earlier today, uh, and he was saying that uh, that if if they they were able to bring him to Nigeria, the way they bring uh, the way they brought a uh, Kanu, that it would have been that they are uh, what they did would, would have been contravening the international uh, international laws. So. Let's hope that the, there's an arrangement that either he escaped. For me personally, uh, on the basis of the fact that we know that his life might be at risk, I wouldn't you know, subscribe to them bringing him back to Nigeria. But then that's, that's just my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much uh, for that uh, view. And uh, I know, uh, uh, permit me to bring Mr. Uh, Isho in here now. I know he's a scholar of international relations, and I know uh, you may have a perception to what has been stated earlier by the uh, by the panelists. What do you make of the contributions of the panelists? Uh, I mean, yeah. Please, you have the floor. Uh, good evening, my colleagues. There, uh, I think. Uh, they have uh, discussed the issue as expected, but I just want to pinpoint two certain areas that I think the Nigerian government has failed in a larger percentage. The first uh, observation is what actually led to Sunday Bo to be taking the matter at hand. It was because of the leadership failure. Had it been the president appeared, spoke, addressed the issue, like the president of the country, I see no reason why any individual need to throw off the gauntlet. But unfortunately, the president has been demonstrating to be a regional president. For that reason, Senegal did it very necessary you know, to rise against the killings of his own people. We need to get it right that Nigeria has not attained the concept of nationhood. That is why when you see contribution from the leader, it's either have religion, affiliation, or ethnocentric sentiments. And 60 years after independence, I don't expect Nigeria leader to be demonstrating as that. What I mean in essence is, if President Mohamed Buhari perhaps the governor of that particular state are taking the prompt intervention to the waiting allegations that have been making against the Fulani henchmen killing the Yoruba there. Perhaps Tete Bo might have now rising above board to speak for his own people. That is one area. The second area is the arrest they made in Benin Republic just like we saw that of uh, you know, in Kenya. This is a confirmation and pointification of how loose, how porous, how unprotected Nigeria borders have. Because if our borders have been well secured, it will be very convenient and comfortable for the duo to leave the country. But Nigeria is a country just like how Obasanjo described it as anything goes. 
So it's very easy for people to leave the country to another country. Unfortunately for us, country like Kenya, country like the Republic, that were far behind Nigeria yesterday, have now become the high that are helping the country in arresting or in making environment enabling to arrest our own people. This is a shame. It's a shame on my country that we could not protect the movement of these people within our land, either to arrest them or to get them invited until they left to another country. It is then Nigeria now working in synergy, making an interpol before these people could be arrested. It is unfortunate. Now that they have been arrested, just like in the Kanu, you know how they treated the Americano, and that has been the concern of the people. I think being Nigeria has, you know, refined itself, like what is obtainable in advanced countries. Arresting these people, we need to be on the street jubilating. But it's because of the stick and carrot approach to the matter. We have several canons in the Northeast. We have several in the roads in the Northwest. You know, in fact, even their own cause was on only. What are they fighting for in the Northwest? What are they fighting for in the Northeast? And Kanu, of course, and they have reservation for his personality, and now he has been going about his own struggle. But the marginalization concept and how an African people has been killed by the S men is obtainable in the public glare. But if government has done the mission, I don't see Kanu rising because at the later stage, even in the north, in the southeast, people reduced Kanu personality. You know, they wasn't subscribed for his agitation. But at the time, the government in Enugu, the government in Igbo, was shouting how their people have been killed by the s -men. I expected the leadership at the center to be decisive in taking the responsibility. As the constitution clearly stated, the power goes beyond what the state could undo. They did for the federal. But the federal was folding its hands or standing akimbo until these people created, for instance, the Kanu ESN, which they stood against the killings of their own people out there. But yeah. I blame Kanu in one area simply because Kanu's decision or action at the time affected even the Southeastern people. Yeah. Because yeah. It, it, it stopped their businesses. And that is why they have not refined in fighting their own struggle. But on this, yeah. we, 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 we are coming back to that. To, yeah. Okay. We, 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 you you actually delved into part of the yeah. conversation, yeah. and we are coming back to that. Uh, I just uh, hold it hold it there. And uh, looking at all of these, I know we are a, a statement has been issued by IPOB again to actually uh, shut down the southeast beginning from the eighth of August. So I will still come back to you on that conversation. So now let us go into the uh, the reigning matter at the moment. That's the uh, saga involving. Uh, so, I mean, the alleged involvement of uh, our police uh, super coup, as it's been called, that's in person of Abakiari uh, in the Ospopi International Crime Deal. Now, uh, uh, let, let me start over with the village boy again. As a Nigerian, how, how do you feel? What, what was your reaction when you, when you heard about the breaking news that, oh, uh, uh, I mean, our police formation, so to say, and a, a respected quote and unquote entity in the police formation has been alleged or accused to be involved in such a, a, a crime. Can you unmute yourself? You are muted. Sorry, sorry about that. It's uh, very poorly structured sometimes. It backfires. <laughs> so thank you for for for, for that. Uh, uh, this is about um, Abakari, uh, which people have been. I've seen a lot of things. I even posted somewhere Sura the Taylor. So, uh, so I think what is most ridiculous in this is his, was his initial defense that uh, the only interaction here with Oshi Poppy is uh, to help him sew a cloth for three hundred thousand naira. I think for him, for his, for his, by his, for his, by his training, by his pedigree, he should know that um, a lot of things uh, are, are traceable to him. I mean, don't even, without even going deep into forensic um, investigation, there will be a lot of things that have already been thrown out there, 
uh, apart from being seen together, apart from um, uh, frolicking with known criminal elements in society, or uh, people who are involved in legality, even the of a, of a, you know, spectacle of a few weeks ago, it was conspicuous there. And uh, we saw that the the me the, 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 the disregard for our currency, which is illegal actually. So and for and, and for a, a law enforcement agent out at the of the rank of deputy commissioner of police to be involved in those in those situations without any kind of um remorse, remorseness, uh cast um much doubt, you know, to who actually is. Now Beyond the public opinion, the court of public opinion is always um it's not um it's not a regulated court. So whatever uh, is thrown out there is a mixture of the good, the bad, and the ugly. So, but now if you want to look at um the the report of FBI, which I've read over and over again, and um, its defense, which is very lame. So. Uh, the, the fact, simply admitting that I had an association with uh, with that guy, for God's sake, how does a super cop become a, a conduit pipe for sewing uh, cloth? For God's sake, how many tailors do we have in Lagos? I mean, go to go to all the streets in Lagos that where there are, there are tailors. I mean, now you have to need, if if if, if or she puppy, which I have looked at all his pictures, I've never even seen him wearing native dress. So that is also itself give a lot of um, doubt about the authenticity of the defense that uh, Abakari gave. Secondly, it was too quick to respond. He would have waited studied the situation very well before he responded. I also am, am aware that the IG, or IGP has um, uh, said they are embarking on an internal investigation to confirm otherwise or of the allegation, but again, there's also an issue of eight million be traced to him, and is that eight million, eight million naira be traced to his account? The account the which is uh, money was sent to to arrest one shibus or so or the other, and by his um, training, I, I expect that he should be aware of the status of Oshi Poppy before he was arrested. Now the fact I imagine that. Um, even when he went to Dubai, it was the guy that arranged for his car and uh, to be picked up at the at the at the airport and all stuff like that. So there have been interactions with them. So do we can also say was that interaction in the course of um, his his duty as as uh, an intelligent officer? Why well, he could he, that the attempts could be permitted to interact with those people so that he can get what um, they are doing. So now the question is like the police hierarchy has to come up to say, okay, during this course of their interactions, this guy has been writing reports, sick official report about the activities of this guy. But if no such report exists, then we can no longer we cannot claim that his uh, his relationship is official. It means his relationship is uh, is mutually beneficial, in which case. Uh, just like the little something that um, that I wrote on opinion sharers, it's like uh, an undertaker in the in in a lab coat. So when you give somebody to, when you give somebody a lab coat, you are expect him to do a good job to save lives, right? Uh, the guy, a doctor, wear a lab coat to go and save lives, to go and conduct uh, surgery, right? Surgical operations, so that people life can be saved. So all this thing we have seen, we have heard that uh, he had to pay off 70 million for some people to vacate their land on this street where he's posing. That is his picture. That is his street. So this one maybe, though these days all this thing can be doctored, we don't know. But it has, you know, th th those are the issues for public opinion. But fundamentally, by, by the nature of his job, we can say, okay, mingling with these people. Who afford him can give him access to information that otherwise may not have been uh, available. But again, that also has its own comma because it, being a no face already, 
he, he, he will not be able to do that successfully. He can assign his boys undercover to relay with these people. But by the kind of relationship, uh, all this um, uh, where, where social media has, um, has uh, is uploading things, having pictures with them, uh, all this criminal element. There was even one video where I was, in fact, it was dancing to pursue my mother and an average Mushi boy would do. So I said, this guy has, Lagos has sent him very well. <laughs> That's on the, on the funny side. I think, I think there, are, there are a lot of clouds. There are a lot of doubts that um, uh, this guy has to clear. And if he's innocent, let him, I think the government should um, surrender him to the FBI and let him, maybe either they, they, they give him leave of absence or they suspend him. Or Actually, in the decent society, he would have been caught martial by now. So it should have been subjected to guard room uh, interrogation by the police hierarchy. Because whatever it is, the, the thing that is flying about, him, about his involvement now is a case of, um, of, of, of a dent on whatever image that is remaining of Nigeria police. And let us be very sincere with ourselves. Up until now, Abakari was one of those people that were supposedly giving good image to the Nigeria police. Because I've read a lot of comments about him in the past before this saga. These are the kind of people that people say, oh, yes, if you have this me thousands of this guy in Nigeria police, Nigeria police will be better than it is now. Now as it is now, the Nigeria police should not sweep this thing under the carpet. They should arrange their investigation. In fact, he should be on suspension by now. Then they say, okay, after they have gone through that process, if they don't hand, it, hand him over to FBI to go and clear his name, they will be doing a major disservice to us. Yes, this is um, Ajakuya. This is, uh, what do you call it? Um, remind me that his name. I always would like to call him at Ajakuya. <laughs> so, Dino Melai. Dino Melai, yeah. So, and former speaker, Dugara. That's Dugara. Now, this guy, criminal element are romance with people of power. Dugara was number four citizen for crying out loud as at the time they took that picture. So these are the kind of the thing that is very annoying and which is uh, escalating the bad image we already have as a nation. So I think the Nigeria government should get to the root of this. But again, uh, he has the right. Abakari has the right to defend himself, not on social media. And it is his false defense of uh, facilitating a 300,000 uh, Babarega cloth for this thing is as ridiculous as it can ever be. That is so, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to use a derogatory word here. I can't even imagine a person thinking right, giving that as an excuse. So it's, it's a betrayer of the tray of his training. And he's, uh, the accolade we are, we are giving to him as a super cop. That is a total betrayer. Well, you may say it was maybe it was under emotional distress and he felt that he had to just say something. Uh, unfortunately, what he has said is so ridiculous. It's a disgrace to, to, to the uniform he's wearing. It's a disgrace to the training he had and to the name, his name as a super cop, that he can come and say, okay, the only thing I have with this... Uh, now established criminal is because he asked me to help him buy native dress. Come on, Mr. Suradi Taylor. Come with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you, the village boy. I, I will actually give us room to actually discuss about it because it's a it's a, it's more like a, a national shame and uh, institutional shame to the police force owing to the fact that we are still battling with the NSAS, the Baku and all of such. So I, I, I I'll give Mr. Uh, Yomi the, the opportunity. Please share your thoughts with us on this and uh, uh, lessons to be learned going forward. Well, <clears throat> thank you very much. You see, Abba Kiari, um, the man in the high of the storm, has just become the sino show of the decay in Nigerian police force. Okay? Now, uh, if, if, if they say your best now has this old thing all over him, 
then you can begin to imagine what the policemen who are not the best, who have not been celebrated as super cops, we have around their neck. We have always known that Nigerian police is uh, a very corrupt um, agency in Nigeria. We know. And so having the best of the police in Nigeria in this kind of situation goes a long way to tell us how much you know, decay is there in Nigerian police force. And so it is, it is very interesting, really. Though it's a shameful thing that we have to find ourselves in this situation as a country. But I think it's better for Nigeria, at least if our, if our, our redemption process, if our salvation process can start with people whom we think are the best coming down this way, I think it's a very good thing for us and it's a very good development. So that, you know, another thing I want to say is if National Assembly has given this man a standing ovation, he has been celebrated as the best, who is watching the watchman? Who, who, what system is in place in Nigerian police force or even agencies in, in Nigeria to check people who have influence and to be sure that they are not using their influence in a negative way. So this should be a lesson. When we say, okay, this person is this, this person is that, we should try as much as possible to give the other side of what we have seen so far a benefit of doubt. I say that Abakiai having this situation is a signal and we can begin to look very deeply into even senior officers in police force and those, you know, inspector, those inspector general of police who have even retired. A lot of them may have had this kind of, you know, issues around their neck uncovered and they have gone like that. So the lessons we should learn, you know, I won't even say lessons we should learn, like, like uh, uh, village boy said, you see, he has a training that forbids him to even be associated with people like that. So he just flouted whatever he learned during his training and he betrayed the process. So I don't think it's a special lesson for anybody to learn. If you have been trained as who he was trained to be, there are certain things that should he should know, he should not have even dampened his hand into. But for us also, who may want to learn one lesson, or the other. Whatever is it we call ourselves to be, and whatever is it people have celebrated us to be, we should try as much as possible to hold on to it and always know that we have a responsibility, you know, for whichever stand we take part time to defend it and to ensure that our lifestyle goes in line with whatever claim or whatever, you know, picture of ourselves we paint to people. And having said that, I want to also say that 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 Abakiri has not, you know, been suspended now. Though I read that the Surgeon of Police said um, no, no duty will be assigned to him between the time they will review whatever he told them to review and all. What, what are we reviewing, you know, from the reports that FBI brought? What is, what is the review strategy? that we as Nigerians, I mean, Nigerian police want to, we all know how FBI go about their investigation. So if we have damning reports, including phone numbers, you know, pictures, uh, messages that we exchange detail, and so we still feel it is important for us to review. And I want to say Nigerians being who we are, you see news flying all over the place. It's being witch hunted. Uh, people are looking for his downfall. I believe this is a delay tactic to wipe up, to make either the Northern people or his special lovers to wipe up sentiments. And so that whatever is it people start saying about him being witch hunted can whittle down the, the, the efficacy, yeah. you know, the seriousness of whatever Abakiari has done. So I want to say that. Abakiari should be handed over as he has been requested, you know, of FBI. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Yomi, for that position. And uh, let me come to Mr. Paul on this. We were having a conversation earlier before this uh, meeting, uh, this show. 
about the position of certain elements in the North, that it is of no moral justification to be uh, counting or to be resisting the attain, I mean the 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 extradition of Sunday go back to Nigeria and be supporting the extradition of a uh, May Ab Abakiari to the United States for interrogation or perhaps prosecution as the case may be. We have seen all of these ethnic sentiments coming in. What do you make of that position? Well, uh, thank you. I think, uh, first of all, I'd like to create the background that an average Nigerian is an emotional being. Just like an average human being is, is an emotional person. But when you now look at, uh, when you look at Nigerians, you have to, you know, raise it to, to power 10. Okay? So, the, and the implication of that is that we allow emotions to control most of the things that we do, and um, a little bit of logic is applied. You know, it's difficult to compare the two, okay? Um, looking at the father, I mean, uh, Igbo Ho, Igbo Ho is, uh, is a political figure, okay? He's been, he's been he's, this is something that we can actually literally call wish, wish hunting, okay? So, uh, and that's why I think it might be logical for some people to kind of say, okay, uh, they should let him be, especially since he's escaping for his life, okay? It has not been, there has not been allegation of, uh, of Igbo taking money from some people to, to do what, he, what he's been doing, okay? Or to try to cause uh, disharmony uh, or destabilize people's businesses and life. But in the case of, in the case of, uh, you know, it is it's unfortunate that you would have to even call that person Inspector General of Police, Assistant Inspector General of Police. It's it's you know it's it's an embarrassment to all of us. But then, uh, this is someone someone that has been say that that is being fingered to have collaborated, you know, with a known criminal, somebody that has that has. Uh, Torn down businesses, somebody that has ruined lives of people. You have been conniving with him and taking money from him. It is it is almost unreasonable for people like Abba Kiari, with his kind of training, you know, and exposure to say they did not understand what uh, people like uh, Oshpopi was doing. It, it doesn't make sense to say to deny that you don't know that you are you, just like. Uh, Village boy, and all the memes that we have seen on the on social media, you know, he has suddenly become a tailor. It, it is really embarrassing you know, to, to say the, the the list. So, but then you would expect that even Abacha, Abacha was is still being celebrated by some people in Nigeria today, despite all, uh, all that we know about him, despite all the money. In fact, including our president, our president recently or once said, not recently. But at least one said that uh, Abacha was, the, was an honorable man, that uh, Abacha never stole. Yet he has been, all the money that has been repatriated from Abacha's loot has been, you know, given to him and he's been taken. If, if we have honorable leaders, I would expect that some such a person will come to the public and say, ah, I am sorry, you know, I was wrong about this person. But then, they've known us, and uh, I used to say that it is the quality of the citizens that determines the quality of the leaders they get. These leaders, whether you people say they, they select themselves or they force themselves on us, but the fact is that they represent us. They are a replica of the society. They are a major aspect or part and parcel of the society. And so somebody is, is uh, here in the comment section saying, uh, uh, Omaka is saying the National Assembly. And National Assembly, they are all the same thing. That's what this person is saying. An average Nigerian po uh, policeman, and I'm sorry to, or apologies to people who are, the, the few of them who might be trying to live an upright life and uh, support the, the, the ethics of their profession. But unfortunately, what we know, according to the streets and experiences that we have had, 
it is difficult for you to see a Nigerian policeman that is totally honest or honorable. And it is not, and you know, some of these things are difficult to see, but when you walk up to an, an, an average civil, civil, uh, civil servant office in Nigeria, you, you, we, we all know the experience. So an average civil servant is not even different from the police. It, the, only, the only thing that distinguishes us is just the, 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 the opportunities. Whether you have opportunity to take money from people. I was talking to average Nigerians, young Nigerians, if you get the opportunity to be a politician, well, will you steal money if there's money to be stolen? And 90% of them will say, ah, huh, bros, I will. Oh. So these are, the, these are the systemic issues. And unfortunately, I was telling a friend of mine, who a childhood friend of mine, we were chatting yesterday night, and I told him that the problem, because he was saying that uh, it is only God that can fix Nigeria. I said, no lie. God don't fix countries. Go to all these countries that are doing well today. God did not fix them. It is not prayer that fix those countries. It is basic things, basic knowledge. Like, for instance, law, like order. But we don't have those things. Anybody can, it's only the poor people that will, the people, even just carrying placard alone, that can send you to jail in Nigeria. Yet people are taking billions, and then we just uh, hear about it on the news, and then, then we never hear again. Anyway, I think uh, Nigeria has happened to Michael. So <laughs> this, this is uh, so, some of the challenges that, that, that we have. In the 21st century, it's, it's it been saying that they, they, they have no electricity. Yet it's in Abuja. It's in the capital city of Nigeria. As rich as Nigeria is, that was in the news recently that uh, uh, Buhari has laid the foundation for stable electricity. And I'm wondering, even when people are in Abuja and it's environs, can't even have their phone uh, charged or they are more, they are, their laptop charged in the 21st century, an economy that is dependent on knowledge. Anyway, I think I will, <laughs> I would help him. So, uh, uh, Mr. Isho, would you want to lend your voice to the issue of uh, Abakiari? Why we wait for him? Hopefully, maybe he will still be able to join us. Unmute yourself, please. Yes, thanks for the opportunity again. I listened to you one or two things from the commentaries you registered so far. And uh, it is distasteful that this is our country where the symbol of police force could find himself in this kind of mess. What could have amount to any encouragement, even for the committed ones out there, when somebody who we have seen to be exemplary demonstrated himself to be the face of the police, yet it could settle for the personality of those puppies to that extent. It is my surprise when I read it yesterday because, in fact, it was unbelievable to see. And uh, one thing I noticed that Edin being this kind of revelation came from Nigeria environment, I just give it a matter of weeks or few months to come. It will just throw into dust being because several revelations of such nature have been made on the public glare and at the end of the day, there was nothing meaningful came out of it. A case study is that of uh, uh, Magu. Magu revelation, Magu was alleged to be involved in this kind of scandal and we saw the so-called panel constituted by the president. Unfortunately, nothing meaningful came out of that. If it is left in the hand of just Nigeria IG that it has constituted a panel, I bet you, friends out there, nothing meaningful will come out of it. But because it involves a country like US, then we begin to see that there is every tendency that something meaningful has to come from it. This is not a joke. For FBI to have sat down and make such frantic efforts in making investigation and linking Abakiari with Uzipupi, you know, it is very hard for Nigeria to say that 
they are going to review what what on what capacity what capacity do we have to review once an agency of fbi submitted 79 pages linking abakiari to the questionable character and we said that we have our own uh, committee to investigate on that well as an optimist i want to see how far ig we go about it at the same time waiting for the fbi resolution on this but i want to advise like the question asked by uh michael at that time that why the same set of individual said that our own people should not be extradited to the country are the people that are now calling for the extradition of uh, abakia the case is apart nigeria is known for what it is known for this is an environment where we just heard about the revelation or explosion over any allegation but to see the end of it it has become another thing but over there if it takes them five years if it takes them 10 years we are going to see the results look at the issue of uh, the former governor of Andetta state james Ebori. in this country what happened he was not in overs and the money even alleged that it need to be perpetrated when the governor was cut what did he say he said he didn't steal the money belong to the data people so for you to see how we have betrayed the entity of this country for the sentimental attachment but i want to say that uh with this revelation it shows that we need to tackle the problem from the systemic approach just like we have submitted systemic approach in the sense that our problem goes beyond a personal face not mr president we're able to be built big people but at the detriment of having a well strengthened institution in those clients what is available is strengthened institution ahead of any other country if it comes to the power the system will reshape you but here the personality of the governor of the president is above even the system it depends on the interests of the mr governor the interest of the president that will determine how far a case will go not that the system itself will take care of that particular thing but i want to say that by and large i like what happened and you see the politicians around the questionable character former president at the time he was just to so become the president of the country dino milan is known for what is known for the guy is known besides they are now rushing around to have a picture with such questionable character it, it is a disgrace when we see this kind of a thing and we can see from the opposite angle apc people now displaying the picture that now that abakia has been linked then those that have the photograph with the questionable character need to retry to forget that america is not as common or pedestrian in terms of taking reports or decision like nigeria if it is in nigeria I bet you people like Atiku will have been invited. People like Dino Milai will have been invited simply because they saw the picture. Forgetting that they have not made any investigation linking Atiku maybe taking bribe or giving to Ushipupi. So for them to have seen the kind of environment we have ourselves, where sentiment, hatred, you know, unquantifiable love, the tummy, the shape of Nigerian governance. I want to say that. Let's see how far this will go. And I want to see the reports, even from the ITB first, even before we receive what is likely to happen in the U.S. there. So that yeah, is my yeah. take on that. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Isho, for that submission. Sorry, Nigeria actually happened uh, very briefly. Uh, kindly, on, I mean, mute your mic uh -huh, if you are not having the the conversation if you are not making the contribution yeah um another interesting thing that happened is the issue of arm purchase between nigeria and u.s and uh, we have been seeing conflicting reactions from both the legislative arm of government and uh, the executive there yesterday it was reported that the u.s congress that was the day before yesterday sorry stopped the deal between nigeria and u.s to buy arms worth 875 million dollars and yesterday we had the minister of information and culture uh alaji lai muhabed they are coming to the press to tell us that there was no uh 
I mean, she has a business deal of such between Nigeria and U.S. And afterwards, the Senate president, in person of uh, uh, Dr. Ahmed Lawan, equally came out to tell us that they are going to interface with the U.S. Congress so that the arms uh, purchase can, can be done. Well, I can see the panelists smiling, and it sounds uh, very funny and ridiculous, but let me leave all of us to actually have uh, uh, make contribution on that. Uh, uh, Village Boy, uh, just uh, in one minute, what, what is your thoughts uh, about that? Uh, those conflicting positions? <laughs> oh, Okulai <laughs> again. <laughs> I wish I could avoid uh, anything about Okulai. <laughs> we know his pedigree. We know his... Um, and also we know that um, uh, Nigerian uh, government have always been working at cross couple cross purposes. So it is not a new thing that has um that is uh that is emerging here. So we have um, a government that deny things. One arm will be denied, another person will be affirming. So I, I think that that that, 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 has, that has been a usual pattern. It did not even start with this uh, government anyway. It has been there for a while. So you in, in such case, you, delay, you rely more on the external party. Information coming outside Nigeria has been more reliable to work with because um, the information that we that our government gives to us is always very contradictory. So I don't think it's a new thing. So I am not surprised. And um, I would have said that uh, I would... Maybe I will... Uh, Uncle Lai said he told his grandson that he has never told a lie in his life. So I think I will leave it at that. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, or rock with CJ. That's what uh, <laughs> you are leaving it at. Well, uh, before we go on that, I think uh, let's let's let me hear the view of uh, uh, Mr. Yomi on that. What do you make of Mr. Lai Mohammed? And interestingly, he's from Kwara State. So let, let's let's hear your your perception on that. <laughs> thank thank you very much. You see, um, Mr. Lai Mohammed is just acting out what all of us have known him to be. So it's nothing special, it's nothing you know, strange to us, okay? And then APC-led federal government has been a government of inconsistency, we all know. Even their own party as APC, you know, there's the issue of um, Jegede from Supreme Court, Jegede, the PDP gubernatorial aspirant of Ondo State. You know the supreme supreme court case that they just rounded off a couple of days ago you know the party itself had come out in two different factions you know festus Kayamo is saying something different abubaka malami is saying another thing different about whether it is important for them to step the caretaker committee chairman down you know it has always been like that you remember the time of uh, malami himself and um, Ibrahim Magu, EFCC. So APC-led federal governments have always been like that. They have always been in concern. Therefore, Malam um, Lai Muhammad, it's nothing special, it's nothing new. Let's see how events unfold so that we will know at the end of the day who is lying and who is telling the truth. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, we have a few minutes to the end of the conversation, and I would love to also touch uh, the issue of uh, Ibrahim Helzadzaki <coughs> that was uh, granted, uh, that was discharged and acquitted a few days ago, I think, day before yesterday, by the Federal High Court in uh, in Kaduna. And um, we, we have seen him face or be, being in detention for about four, uh, over four years now. And uh, yesterday, the Kaduna state government issued a statement that uh, fresh allegations will be filed against him despite the uh, position of the court. Yeah, Mr. Ishuo, can you please take us through your contribution on that? Mr. Ishuo. Mm -hmm. On the issue of uh, Elsa Kiseki, you know, it was a freedom after 67 months in illegal detention because everybody knew what led to his detention. And now the governor of Cardinal State has been so 
you know, abusive about the approach of the matter. In fact, after we heard about his discharge and acquitted, you know, Erufai has gone all out again to fight another case against him. And forgetting that we are narrowly looking at the issue of Esakisaki as head of uh, Shia, uh, as a person, but forgetting that it has international implication. When you look at the debate in the, in the uh, Congress in the US, they discuss the reason behind why they will not grant or supply Nigeria ammunition on the way we are going about the human rights, about the people's human rights, that it is quite illegal. Of course, it wasn't started today. It started even yesterday when Jonathan administration wanted to purchase uh, arms from the Israel. It was denied, you know, it approached France, it was denied. I wanted to use black market approach in South Africa. It was exposed. It was exposed by the power out there. But as of today, I want to say that it's even fairly demonstrated yesterday than what is obtainable today. How could you make somebody in detention for 67 months without any concrete fact? You remember that of Dasuki too? Dasuki spent almost three years in detention. You know, AU, Ekowans, International Court, and others said that the man should be freed and the trial should commence. But this is the country where the evidence will not be provided and the trial will, will, will continue. So I want to say that all this is as the international implication on the country. When you see the lack of coordination from the government, I see Alaji Lai Mohammed beyond being Alaji Lai Mohammed, but the face of the executive and Lawal, the face of the legislature, if at that echelon, the two fail to reconcile on the reason, are they trying to be diplomatic about telling lies or what's the issue? If they fail to tell Nigerians the problem we are facing, then how will we solve it? And to some people that believe that in the same years that one church to procure us to Kano Church. You remember in 2019 when we paid for it, but we forgot the national interest of US in 2018 and the national interest of the US in 2021. Nigeria interest is to get the arms and the interest of US is not to give us. Then what's the reason? These are the things we need to look into. The question about El Sakisaki has to do with the current stance made by the US government. When we were told about Twitter, you remember I said that Twitter should not be seen like ordinary chevron. Nigeria afraid to, to, to listen at that level. It is only chevron, you can ban, don't come here, don't come here. But when you see power like EU, US, Canada, UK, five countries condemn the attitude of Nigeria, we are flapping the wings that we have been suffering. We are suffering state as if we can be alone. Forgetting that we need to work in collaboration with other countries of the world, even in fighting the insecurity in our own country. Now, America said no. As America said no, if they approach another country, America say have influence to say, don't give them. So this is why we need to, you know, tread this softly and going in line with international diplomacy in handling sensitive issue when it comes to human rights. Lucky case is there. Look at the take of the countries of the world on the lucky the, on, on lucky massacre or on lucky allegation. And you see the demonstration of the Nigeria that we are alone as if we can survive alone. If we in Africa soil, we cannot survive, let alone in the countries of the world there. So it now lies on the president. And to my surprise, we have having a chief of staff who have used his life as a diplomat, career diplomat. What advice? Has it been given to Mr. President to change this, you know, dark foot approach in the international issue? But to give advice is one thing, and to listen is another thing from the presidency. Is this as close as to Mr. President as service is as close as to Mr. President? Is it not something in the field that are dictating that don't listen to this, listen to this? You know, the advice. Let me give you an example. Look at what happened in the APC crisis now. Mr. President is now call of vice president to look into the matter when the judges of Supreme Court talks about the issue, about the judgment given in those states. Everybody have listened to the vice president to give his legal idea 
or now to go about the constitution of the committee of APC. This should have been. But when you have an AG that's, you know, I, I don't know how to how, how to paint his uh, personality because it's not been effort. And, you know, first of all, give an advice that we need to be cautious and you listen what the AG say. And AG is the face of this administration. If the face is not aware about the common practice of law in the country, this is the way the country needs to go. But I want to say that when Modu Gwari, it will make two years or less than that. You need to sit tight and understand. At the same time, Nigeria, we need to think of how to review our leadership recruitment process. Somebody that has led the path, Papa Cast 1984, Michael, without having common seminar on leadership or reading about power and authority, become the president of the today. As a Denver president, we need to learn from this and see that yeah. we need to review yeah. our leadership process and the kind of person that needs to represent us right from the chairmanship to the governorship and to the presidential phase in the country thank, thank you thank you mr isho for that contribution and uh, i will leave all of us now i'll give us one one minute each to give our final remark on this conversation i know we can't uh, we can continue on and on there are a lot of issues to be discussed but we can't exhaust the conversation now on the general issues discussed uh mr me just in one minute you have the floor what was your final contribution well um my final contribution is that state actors should begin to see themselves as whatever decision they take is for all of us as nigerians and to as well try as much as possible to consider um the view of um, the global world on Nigeria as giants of Africa. So I still trust, I still believe in Nigeria and I trust that Nigeria will be great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. But uh, I think the giant now is gradually becoming crippled. Well, we'll look into that conversation uh, subsequently. Yeah, Mr. Paul, your final remarks on the, on the show for today. Well, I, I don't have much to say, but I have a, uh, I have something here on my screen that I would want to share with us. Okay, this is it. It said, when the citizens of a nation deemed their most accomplished thieves as the most electable, then they lost the right to complain when the thieves become their national creed. I think, uh, it's unfortunate that um, all of us can claim to be victims, but in reality, we are accomplices. And until we get up, you know, and sit tight and make demands collectively as Nigerians, let's build institutions and stop celebrating thieves among us, known thieves, okay? Let us stop recycling all these leaders that have failed over the years, including people like Buari. We have tried people like Buari and he has failed. So we should know now that recycling any, of this, any set of these people, we are only you know, putting ourselves in more trouble. I, I'll stop here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Isho. You have the floor. Your final comment on the show for today. Kindly unmute yourself, sir. I just want to advise our political players out there that if it is possible for us to review the manifesto of each political party so that it will be drawn on ideological, you know, belief in separating party A to party B. What you are offering is just the changing of April. Put on red and change it to green. When you see people far back as 1999, those who are in PDP yesterday, most of them have migrated to APC today. And they will start on the podium condemning, you know, the administration of the PDP, forgetting that they were part and parcel of the PDP. But when we have what is obtainable, for instance, in US, where we have Republican and Democratic, that's very hard 
for one to leave a party to the other. It's because of being separated on principle, on ideology, and on belief. Until we have such political parties in the country, not a mere changing of acronyms of APC to PDP or APC to ABGA, ABGA to YPP. This is just a mere acronym. The same toga of the political players in APC and Y in PDP. We need to start reviewing our leadership process. When we are producing the best from a party A, a party B, there won't be any gambling. We are gambling in the country. We elect people well that we know doesn't have the capacity to shift the challenge from what we had to what the, they don't have a common roadmap. When you ask them questions, they don't understand. So how are they going to feed the country? So it's our own responsibility to keep on talking, charging people out there that there is the need for us to produce people of ideology, people that really understand the problem facing that people are capable to fix it. Yeah, th thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate your contribution. And finally, to the village boy, your, fine, your departing remark on the show for today. Well, thank you so very much. I think one of the things that has brought us here is impunity. There are no consequences for our actions. And because there are no consequences for our actions, those the government do away with, do what they lie with. Let's take the case of Abakari, for instance. If he's conscious of the likely consequences, if the bubble bursts, I'm sure he will be extra careful in doing what he do, in doing what he has been doing, the same thing. The El Sakasaki. I don't think um, it is yet time for us to rejoice. That the fact that the federal record has freed him doesn't does mean he has gained freedom, or has he been released? And if he has not been released, uh, I'm sure we may not have had the last about that. Uh, given the Nigerian government system that I know, the Cardinal government may appeal the judgment and the case may drag on. This is judgment at the only at the federal court. We see after it has been released. It has been released. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's good. So. That's good news. Hope he will not be rearrested. No, they because are they already they're already preparing to file another case to get him arrested again. <laughs> so because uh, the Nigerian government they don't, they, that's what I call the arrogance of administration. That's why I call it. They don't want to be seen to be defeated. So we should be, then we need eternal vigilance. We need to be vigilant. We need to be vigilant to call out people, to, to, to struggle to build a system that is accountable, institution that is accountable. If we don't deal with impunity, even I don't. I actually I think impunity is even it has a stronger influence on Nigeria than corruption. Anyway, impunity gives uh, room for corruption because you know that there are no consequences if you have the opportunity, you steal because you know nothing will happen to you. So if you can tackle impunity, we can tackle Nigeria. Problem. I believe Nigeria is fixable, but we need people of goodwill. To fix Nigeria. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, we must sincerely thank you for joining the conversation today. Uh, I mean, our viewers, we sincerely appreciate you for staying tuned. We appreciate your comments. Please always keep them coming and always join this uh, platform every Fridays and Saturdays at 5 p.m. I must thank uh, 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 I mean, the team of panelists for this evening, Mr. Aisho. I thank you. Mr. Aisho is a public affairs analyst and uh, international relations expert. Thank you so much for joining us. And um, uh, Mr. Yomin Absentia is a scholar, is an education scholar. We thank you for joining the conversation, Mr. Paul. Thank you for, um, for, for your contribution. We appreciate you. you joined us from India, why uh, the village boy himself. Uh, thank you for joining us and we appreciate your contribution. Always joining us from Canada. Thank you so much. And I am Michael Olaugu.